Today, we're going to be talking about proportion and scale and how that relates to art and how that can manipulate our art to make it more interesting or more dynamic, meaning interesting. Okay. Anyways, so when we talk about proportion and scale, we are talking about the size, the location, or the amount of one element of art in relationship to another. So, uh, you know, a big chunk of red versus a small little piece of red or a really big uh, size as in like how tall it is, like the shoes in the bottom compared to the space that it's in. You can tell that it's giant because of the people that are in it or how many squares. There's like a hundred squares on the left, but there's only 15 on the right. So proportion is talking about the amount, the size, okay, or the location of an element in relationship to another element. And a lot of the examples that we have here are dealing with size and how that can be something that we can play with to make our artwork really interesting. So in the two examples that I have below, you have normal everyday objects that are blown up to crazy proportions or to a crazy size to make it kind of interesting. So we have the Wicked Witch of the West ruby red shoes, and she's coming out from underneath this random building. And it's not normal person size. It's huge, okay? And then we also have this giant badminton birdie in the middle of a park, okay? So when we talk about proportion, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that it's a lot bigger than normal. It could be a lot smaller than normal and other ways of playing around with the size. So the first example that I have for you guys is actually one that you can see here in Minnesota, which is crazy. Uh, we have Klaus Oldenburg, and he created this sculpture in 1985. And he is a pop artist, meaning he makes artwork that is inspired by popular culture, mass production. So things that we have a lot of, like spoons, okay? I don't know about you, but I don't own a single spoon. I own a lot of spoons, Okay. And then food uh, can be another big thing to play around with, like ice cream. Okay. Have you had a single ice cream cone in your life or have you had a lot? Okay. And the number of these items that we use, you know, I might have had, you know, touched hundreds, thousands of spoons in my life. And to illustrate that, he makes them big. Okay. So this. A specific sculpture is called Spoon Bridge and Cherry, and it is located in Minneapolis across the street from the Walker Art Center in their sculpture garden. So if you get a chance to ever go and see the Minneapolis Art Institute up there, the MIA, uh, make a quick puddle jump over to see this really cool work of art. Um, it's one of the most iconic or most popular places to take a selfie in the Twin Cities because it's super popular, done by a very well-known and respected artist. So um, you can tell just by looking at this picture that the spoon and the cherry are huge. You probably could fit about 20, 30 people, you know, on the little bowl of that spoon there, though you're not able to climb on it. Highly unfortunate, but it's not a jungle gym. It's art. And what is really cool is just how massive it is. And when you stand next to something so massive, it just is really cool. So I encourage you guys to see that sometime, especially because it's in the same state that we're in. Nice. Here we have a work of art by Chuck Close, uh, painted in 1968. That is not a photograph. That is a painting, which is wild. Okay. You can see Chuck Close, the artist standing right next to it. And you can see how the proportion, the scale, how the size of the finished work is so much larger. Okay. Now, um, something that's really interesting about the size is if you saw this work in person, you get really close and you can see the pores and on his skin, the individual hairs that were painted. And he used a special type of method called the grid method to help him to keep their proportions or keep the size of everything correct when he was doing his artwork. And that's actually something that we're going to be experimenting with is this grid method. So we'll talk more about that later. Here we have a work by Luis Borgia, and this was created in 1999. Okay. Um, if you saw this work, you it's about like a story and a half tall. So it's like 20, 15 to 20 feet tall. So it's a very big spider. Okay. Um, and especially like if, you know, spiders are something you're not very comfortable with, that makes it an even more impactful piece because uh, it stirs up those emotions that you have, those 
you know, I guess motions of being terrified uh, when you're looking at the artwork and having imagining if this spider was actually that big. Can you imagine a spider that huge? I kind of don't want to. Um, I'm okay with them being smaller ones. You know, that's totally fine with me. Anyways, so this is another artist that scaled up some of her work to create a greater emotional response or make you feel uh, a certain way when you look at it because it's so big. If it was an itsy bitsy teeny weeny little spider, would you feel the same way as in comparison to this giant spider? Probably not. Okay. You know, I look at him like, oh, that's so cool. Okay. Uh, but a little spider, yeah, that's not as cool uh, because it's kind of scary and they move really fast. But if you are someone who doesn't like spiders at all, no matter what the size, this might be a very kind of like, you know, emotional or maybe even scary kind of experience imagining something that big. Anyways, uh, Luis Borgia, really cool stuff. Check her out. And then we have Ron Newick. Um, and he created this work in 1958. And you can tell that it is huge. See the people standing right in front of it? Okay. It's not just a normal life-size sculpture. He is known for making hyper-realistic or super-realistic sculptures of the human form. So uh, sometimes he makes them super big, like this one right here. And sometimes he does them a, lot, a little bit smaller than real life. And we'll see some of those examples as well. But with his art... He's making you see things differently because the size is so big, okay? Um, you know, the expression on the person's face and how they are uh, reacting in response to people looking at him um, is very powerful. And there's a whole story behind it, but we're not going to go too deep into that. But just a really cool artist who also uses proportion and scale to create a larger impact and emotional response to people looking at their art. So um, I want to talk a little bit about proportion, but how you can tell whether or not there's proportion, okay? The big thing in our definition is, you know, the amount, the size of an element in comparison to other things in the image, okay? So this is another work by, uh, by Ron Muick. Now the question is, is do you know with 100% certainty that this is – a proportioned piece that it's made a lot bigger or a lot smaller. Can you tell? You can't. Why? There's nothing else in the image, guys. Okay. So you need to be able to compare it to something else. Compare its size with something that you know is a normal size. What else is in the image besides the sculpture and the platform that it's on? Okay. You can't tell whether or not it's normal size, if it's bigger than normal or it's smaller than normal because there's nothing to compare it to. Now, if we had a someone, a human, a person that we know is a certain size standing in the image with it, then we'd know that it's a proportion piece. But here we can't tell. Okay. So the big thing with us identifying proportion is being able to have something to base our size off of, a, a control if you want to go into science terms, something that we know is a constant and then this is the size that changes. How about this one? Yeah, you like the baby? Yeah, it's kind of creepy, but you know, they're kind of ugly when they come out, but get used to it. Anyways, do you know with certainty whether or not this artwork is a lot bigger or a lot smaller than normal? Yeah, you can tell it's a lot bigger. Why? Because there are people in the image, okay? We know that's a normal person. We know that they're roughly between 5'3 and 6 feet tall, approximately. I don't know. I've never met these people. But they're standing right next to the sculpture. And look how big it is, okay? That's how you can tell whether or not something is proportioned uh, greater or smaller than normal. is because you have something right next to it, okay? So this one we can tell is larger than life. How about this one? No, it's not a real person. This is a sculpture, once again, by that same Ron Muick, okay? You cannot tell whether or not this is bigger or smaller than real life because look around. What do you see? Nothing, okay? So you can't tell with this specific image whether or not it is scaled up or scaled down, okay? So that's something that's really important to realize. How about this one? Yeah, you see the dude in the background? Okay, he is right next to the sculpture. And then look at the sculpture itself, the lady in the bed. Okay. She is huge in comparison to 
that gentleman. So you know with certainty that this is a, you know, awkwardly proportioned piece, meaning that it's a lot bigger than it's supposed to be. Okay. How about these ladies? Once again, they're not real. These are sculptures. Okay. I actually saw these when I was in New York. Super dope. Check it out sometime. Anyways, but yeah, based on what we see in the image, we can't tell whether or not they are larger and smaller than real life. In real life, they're about like two and a half feet tall. So they're smaller than real life. Okay. Um, but you can't tell that with this specific image. Okay. So um, that's all I have to tell you guys about proportion and scale. Proportion, talking about the relationship between the size of one object. Maybe it's a shape, a line, an amount of color, or the size, actually, in comparison to the rest of the image, okay? And we're going to be working through our exercise where we're going to be talking a lot more about the grid method and then also um, our grid method project. So experimenting with proportion and using a tool to help us get the proportions to be the same throughout our piece. So stay tuned.